For those who are uninitiated in the nuances of the acting world, or civilians as some actors call them, agreeing to be in a TV commercial is a contentious issue. Many thespians, or wankers, as some civilians call them, turn their noses up at adverts and see them as cheapening their art. Jeff Winters, a young actor fresh out of drama school, was of a different opinion, one shared by his landlord, incidentally, that he just needed some money, and really rather quickly. Jeff's first acting job was the lead in an advertising campaign for tea. He was to play a stereotypical British character called Sir Slurpington Boots. Thankfully, the commercials were only going to be broadcast in the small Eastern European country of Moldavia, an anonymous former Soviet nation that very much kept itself to itself, which meant that no one need ever know Jeff had done this embarrassing advert and his career, such as it was at that point, wouldn't be tarnished. And so it was that Jeff boarded one of the infrequent low-budget flights to Moldavia and arrived in the utilitarian warehouse that doubled as a studio to shoot his acting debut. Trussed up in his ridiculous costume, all primary colors with a fake flower on his lapel, Jeff was made to overperform a number of bizarre scenes, all of which would culminate in his catchphrase, what a capital idea. But Jeff smiled through it all. In his mind's eye, he could see himself several years hence, regaling fellow Hollywood stars on The Graham Norton Show with hilarious tales of his burgeoning acting career. They might even show a clip, he chuckled to himself, as he hammed up another tea-drinking escapade. While he was there, he struck up a friendship with Vitaly, the director of the advert, recognizing in one another a burning ambition to change the world through thought-provoking art, they bonded that evening over a bottle of what can only be described as potato-flavored ethanol. Moldavia do not have much contact with outside world, explained Vitaly. I worry one day we cut off completely and my work will never leave this country, he said, tearing up. It's a crime this commercial will never have a global stage, lied Jeff, wondering how good an actor he actually was. So what should I do? Please, what advice would you give? Vitaly looked at Jeff pleadingly. Jeff summoned up three years of drama school experience. Just think of it this way. Every job is an opportunity, he averred sagely. Vitaly seemed entranced at the notion. Still got it, thought Jeff to himself. Within a couple of weeks of getting home, Jeff's luck seemed to take an upturn. He landed a big part in a soap opera. Ali Stabber Staggers was a low-life criminal, a classic screen villain. Jeff was thrilled villains tend to linger in these types of shows, and he felt like he'd hit the big time. Unfortunately, after only a couple of weeks on the show, the writers, under pressure to deliver a sensational ratings-grabbing story, got Ali Stabber Staggers to murder his wheelchair-bound secret male lover with a cheese grater. It was a disaster. The public outcry that followed such a horrific deed meant that Ali Staggers was hastily written out of the show. Within months, Jeff now not only found himself jobless, but so intense and violent was his 15 minutes of fame that he became known only as the Ali Grater. He was jeered at by the general public, of which there are a surprising number who are unable to distinguish fact from fiction. He started to feel that his entire life's purpose was to be a professional hate figure for people to offload their vitriol, be it from a distance or down the corner shop being whacked round the head with a wedge of cheese by an enraged soap fan. Then, one day, Jeff got a call from his old mate Vitaly with an extraordinary offer. Apparently, the people of Mulgavia wanted Sir Slurpington Boots to return and reprise his role. Jeff couldn't believe his luck. The money was good sure, but more importantly, it would be a holiday away from the bile-filled cretins. On arrival at Mulgavia, Jeff was bundled into a car that sped off immediately. The car stopped and he was re-bundled out and escorted into a grand monolithic building where he was greeted by Vitaly. Well, this is a turn up, said Jeff after the two friends had embraced. Last time you picked me up on the back of your scooter. Vitaly couldn't resist smiling proudly. They started walking down a corridor lined with Mulgavian propaganda posters. Many things have changed in these last years. You are now a massive star, 
here in Mogavia. You are an icon. Everybody loves the Slopington boots. Vitaly beamed at him and pointed through a window. Sure enough, Jeff saw billboards featuring the unmistakable image of Sir Slurpington Boots. He even glanced at what seemed to be a row of hedges topiarized into the shape of his head. I'm famous? Jeff hardly dared to believe it. The whole ad campaign had just take off and bloody explode, you know. You're so famous, even the president himself will love you. Seriously, mate. The president really loves you. He is, um, how you say, blessed with exceptional taste, offered Jeff hopefully, oh, like crazy in the brain. And if he is angry, many people suffer. Vitaly's tone changed abruptly. So it's good you are here, Vitaly beamed at Jeff, who was trying to process this information. Well, I'm glad I can help you. Vitaly clapped him on the back affectionately. Help me! Sir Slurpington Boots make my career because the president, he love him so much. I am Minister for Culture and... <coughs> Vitaly coughed over a word that sounded suspiciously like propaganda. Jeff inwardly wondered what had happened to the Vitaly who dreamt of uncensored art and freedom of speech. It's like you tell me, every job is an opportunity. Eventually, they reached the end of the corridor and Jeff was ushered into a makeup and costume area where, once again, he was transformed into his career-defining character, Sir Slurpington Boots. Jeff stared into the mirror where, soon staring back at him, was a two-dimensional buffoonish character with ridiculous teeth and an oversized fake plastic flower on his lapel. That sodden flower, he thought to himself. He was rudely snapped out of his reverie at the sound of gunshots ringing out from behind a door. A door through which, somewhat worryingly, Vitaly was now pulling a protesting Jeff. This didn't look like a film set. Instead, it was a dimly lit, bare room which was lined with plastic sheeting. And was that a body slumped in the corner? It was hard to tell, so Jeff tried to persuade himself that it was just a beanbag. A figure by the window turned to greet them. Sir Slurpington Boots, I presume. Only now did Jeff see that this was none other than Alexei the Supreme, the Mulgavian president, and his heart beat hard with terror. Yet some kind of survival instinct kicked in, and he slipped into character. Mr. President, charmed, I'm sure. He added a mime of sipping a cup of tea with an accompanying gasp of post-drink satisfaction. Alexei clapped his hands delightedly, it is a dream come true, he enthused. Come, I would be honored if you would tea with me. What a capital idea, Jeff found himself saying as he, Vitaly, and the deranged dictator sat down at the empty table. I must apologize for the lack of service. I had some issues with my tea supplier. Alexei waved his gun vaguely in the direction of what was definitely not a beanbag. Over the next hour, Alexei told Jeff, or Sir Slurpington Boots, depending on your point of view, the true nature of this visit. Alexei's popularity had been waning, and such was Sir Slurpington Boots' popularity in the country, that if he was seen to be supporting the president through a series of photo opportunities and public appearances, Alexei, by extension, would be seen as a man of the people. But surely your supremacy, ventured Jeff, letting his character slip somewhat, your public will see that Sir Slurpington Boots is just a character. I mean, these ridiculous teeth alone. By way of demonstration, Jeff tried to take his comedy fake teeth out, except they wouldn't come out. It would seem that someone had taken the provision of using somewhat more permanent glue than usual. He looked askance at Vitaly and only now saw a barely perceptible shaking of his head. Meanwhile, Alexei burst into laughter. Of course you are a character. You are such a character. But now, where are my manners? I've kept you waiting long enough. What else but some tea? I insist on preparing it myself. That would be a capital idea, grinned Jeff automatically. As the chuckling despot wandered off to fuss with the tea-making set, Jeff leant urgently over to Vitaly. What the fuck is going on? He asked, not unreasonably. 
Vitaly replied equally urgently, you need to humor him, be his friend, make him happy, be Sir Slurpington Boots. At this point, Jeff realized with horror that not unlike the soap funds back in the UK, Alexei had difficulty distinguishing reality from fiction. He believed Sir Slurpington Boots was a real person. And if I say no, he will get angry. And if he's angry, many people will suffer. I told you this. Vitaly's tone changed. But you are a great actor. It will be easy for you. We are very grateful. You do a magnificent favor to our country. Before Jeff could reply, Alexei returned with the tea things. Jeff's eyes widened as he placed his revolver on the table. Shall I be mother? Later that day, Jeff and Vitaly were sitting in the guest apartment set aside for Sir Slurpington Boots, arguing about the nuances of the term house arrest. I have no internet or telephone and I'm not allowed to leave this place. I am basically a prisoner, Jeff pointed out. Vitaly picked up a bowl of fruit. Would a prisoner have Moldavian apricots, he asked, as though this was somehow the final word on the matter. I think we're skirting around the main issue, however, said Jeff, trying and failing to contain his mixture of panic and irritation, which is that I've got to stay in character 24 hours a day in full costume and makeup. How do I know Alexei won't kill me, have me stuffed and use me as a sex doll? Vitaly now placed both hands on Jeff's shoulders. Jeff, you are my friend. I will not let harm come to you but you have the opportunity to do a great favor to an entire nation and you will be handsomely rewarded. Befriend him, keep him talking, follow him wherever he goes. If he's happy, he's less likely to do something dangerous. So Jeff had no choice but to do Alexei's bidding. Everywhere Alexei went, Sir Slurpington Boots went too. Factory openings, cabinet meetings, sporting events. At each occasion, the appearance of Sir Slurpington Boots provoked unadulterated cheers. In Alexei's mind, the approbation was all for him, and it served to reinforce the belief that this excellent plan of his, he conveniently forgotten that it was Vitaly's, was all going brilliantly. At first, Jeff struggled. His training fell woefully short in preparing him for this role. What was Sir Slurpington's background? What was his motivation? Jeff thought it best to ignore these questions and limit himself to a small pool of phrases. Vitaly insisted that all he had to do was just let Alexei do the talking, and talk Alexei did. What do you think of my shithole, Sir Slurpington Boots? Alexei suddenly asked one afternoon as they were taking tea for the seventh time that day. Jeff tensed up. Suddenly the idea of him being repurposed as a sex doll didn't seem so far-fetched. He chose his words very carefully. The toilet facilities in your palace are capital. Alexei laughed heartily. Not the hall for shit. The shithole that is this country, Bulgaria, is surely the most disgusting country you have ever been to, no? Was this a trick question? Jeff didn't know, but luckily, before he had a chance to answer, Alexei ploughed on in a diatribe about his own nation. How he detested Moldavian culture for being backward, for being full of ignorant peasants. You can tell my people anything they believe. This is how I keep power. I pretend that our neighbor, Gos Gravista, is our enemy. What is best for keeping people busy? Making tea? Ventured Sir Serpington Boots, and certainly. He personally felt that his tea-themed small talk was starting to wear thin, but Alexei seemed not to notice. To make war. Here, he leaned towards Jeff conspiratorially. It is always good to have a common enemy, don't you think? Oh, capitally so, agreed Sir Slurpington Boots. Later, as he and Vitaly shared a bottle of superior potato-flavoured ethanol during their daily debrief, Jeff recounted the dictator's words. To his surprise, Vitaly seemed pleased. Doesn't that bother you? quizzed Jeff. He made a joke about how Mulgavian men grow moustaches to look like their sisters. I think it might have lost a little in the translation, to be fair. But Vitaly seemed unbothered. Have you met my sister? I rest my case. Vitaly chuckled and gently released a boozy potato burp. You are doing very well. Very soon, Sir Slurpington Boots will be no more. 
To Jeff's surprise, he suddenly realised he had mixed feelings about the end of the job here in Mulgavia. In spite of everything, he found he was actually enjoying himself. The intimidating fact that Alexei was a ruthless dictator was starting to fade a little, and Jeff was beginning to see him more as a credulous, adoring younger brother. Increasingly, whenever he was out with Alexei, it turned into the Jeff show. He hammed it up, did all the classic Slurpington moves, he improvised, pratfalled, wheeled out his English catchphrases. He could do no wrong in the eyes of the Mulgavians. Finally, after years of hatred from the British public, Jeff was being embraced by this foreign people. His popularity seemed unstoppable. And that was when things started to go wrong. Blinded by the love of a public that had eluded him for so long, Jeff forgot that his whole reason for being there was to make the other guy look good, not to look better than the other guy. And the other guy clearly wasn't happy. One day, he and Alexei took to a podium in front of a small group of journalists and TV cameras. Jeff assumed it was yet another public engagement and switched to his usual clowning, but Alexei looked somber. He suddenly launched into a presentation of some new Slurpington Boots adverts, clearly the original commercials from years ago, but re-edited. In these versions, Sir Slurpington Boots was apparently condoning barbaric acts an unpatriotic sentiment. Jeff almost laughed at how clumsily the thing had been edited. Surely no one will fall for this. But he stopped laughing when clips of his brutal cheese grater murder were also intercut. Jeff watched aghast as Alexei whipped the journalists and presumably the audience watching live at home into a frenzy. What was he saying? Alexei's words. It's always good to have a common enemy were ringing in Jeff's ears as everything went into a blur and he searched frantically for Vitaly among the small crowd. Did they really believe it? Did it matter? Then to Jeff's surprise, Alexei kissed him on both cheeks and sang a weird incantation. Was this a death sentence? And where the fuck was Vitaly? Alexei clapped his hands and two heavily armed guards grappled him off the podium and frog-marched him down a corridor. From outside, Jeff could hear the baying of the angry mob that seemed to have been assembled suspiciously quickly before he was shoved unceremoniously into the room with plastic sheeting on the floor. This was it, thought Jeff, remembering with a chill the dead body he saw in the corner on his first day. He was going to die here in this ridiculous costume. The Graham Norton show never seemed so far away. Jeff's heart pounded as the door creaked open. A shooting squad? Hi, Jeff, said Vitaly brightly, as though greeting a friend down the pub. I'm sorry it had to end this way. It was the only way I could kill you, he added cheerily. Jeff stared at him disbelievingly. Could it be Vitaly, his friend? Vitaly had portrayed him? You did this. You made those films. It was the only way to get you out of this country alive, explained Vitaly. Jeff practically collapsed in relief. But why have you got me in this execution room? It's changing room. I need the costume back, please. Vitaly held out his hand. Jeff gratefully started ripping off the stupid costume. Vitaly scooped up the jacket as though it were the most precious thing on earth. I'll take this. I need to show Alexei some proof of the dead traitor. Well, won't he want to see a body? Worried Jeff, still not convinced he was off the hook in this country of lunatics. Oh, we have plenty of former tea suppliers for that, replied Vitaly distractedly as he examined the costume. Alexei will never know. You have your ridiculous teeth and makeup to thank for that. So, I'm going home now, asked Jeff, hardly daring to believe he'd just escaped death. Of course! Vitaly looked up at Jeff quizzically. You did not really think I was going to kill you. Maybe I am better actor than you. Vitaly slapped his back playfully. Jeff's emotions lurched from anger to relief, then finally to despondency. On the plus side, he wasn't going to die, but on the other hand, he was leaving a nation of people who hated him, only to return to another nation who also hated him. Well, those who even remembered who he was, that is. 
So Jeff went home, went back to looking for acting work. Did he tell anyone about his extraordinary adventure? Well, what was the point? Would it get him any work? Definitely not. Mulgavia was so isolated that he had no way of proving it anyway, even if he wanted to. Jeff decided that the best course of action was to take up position on his sofa and fester until everyone and everything just went away. Then, one day, as Jeff was watching the news, a big story broke. At the word Mulgavia, Jeff sat up and listened. It would seem that the reclusive president of Mulgavia, Alexei the Supreme, had been sensationally exposed as a corrupt and insane leader, thanks to hours of secret footage. Jeff looked at the TV in amazement, watching as the interim president and leader of the underground opposition movement heralded a new era of media transparency and open relationships with the West. And it's all thanks to one man, said Jeff's old mate Vitaly, who went on to extol the heroics of national hero Jeff Winters in his alter ego, Sir Slurpington Boots, who risked his own life and bravely worked with the opposition in a covert mission to expose the president. There were shots of Jeff as Sir Slurpington Boots and secret footage of Alexei boasting about his wealth and ranting about his compatriots. It all seemed very familiar to Jeff, like a deja vu. That flower, that sodden flower. No wonder Vitaly wanted him to keep on the costume at all times. Every job is an opportunity, Jeff thought, as he read a text from his agent. Need to discuss TV interview and book deal. Do you still have the outfit? 